no one likes to feel defeated am i correct is there anyone here on the platform tonight who likes to feel defeated please raise your hand but this is how we feel when we find ourselves in a cycle of falling into sin and i mean falling into sin is one thing but not knowing how you got there you know uh is another and then feeling terrible feeling bad and depressed and then repenting sincerely that you're not going to do it again and then walking and then it happened again are you wondering when is this going to end is is this how i'm supposed to live my life my christian walk until jesus comes you know this type of experience creates uncertainty about your future as a christian and i want to assure you that that is not how god expects you to live of course of course if that's the situation you find yourself in don't give up don't get discouraged but know that jesus has a program and a plan for you to become a mature christian who walk by faith and not by sight who knows what it means to be consistent in your walk with god it is possible in and for the name of jesus that's what this series is all about and i'll be presenting to you step by step what you need to do to become a mature christian there are many examples in the bible of how god works to mature his children to to grow us in christ two of my favorites uh, one is abram you know abram god called abram from babylon from chaldea and said listen i'm gonna bless you and make your name great and abram entered into that covenant and promise by faith not knowing where he was going but as he journeyed you realize that god took abram step by step through a journey of faith until abram made so many mistakes you know abram told a lie about his wife and his relationship with her twice you know, later on, when God's promise was taking long to fulfill, he took Agar to be his wife, trying to fulfill God's promise, trying to force God's hands to work. Until Abram got to the point where God could say to him, No, I know that you fear me, because you have exercised a faith that is stronger than death. That is the faith that God wants us to have. And then you have the journey of the Israelites. And even though majority of them did not get the point about the journey, all of that journey from Egypt to Canaan was a journey of faith lessons. There are two men who got the point, Caleb and Joshua. They understood what it means to exercise the faith of the overcomer. And then finally, I did say two, but I added another one in the middle. Peter, the apostle Peter, and, 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 and I could say the 12 apostles, but Peter's experience demonstrated even more of how Jesus, you know, guys, uh, listen, let me tell you something. When you come to Jesus, he knows all about you. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your shortcomings. He knows how deeply selfish you are but in spite of that God calls you and when he said when he said to Peter follow me and I will make you fishers of men Jesus knew that one day Peter would deny him but Jesus was able to look beyond that and to look at a point where Peter could come and be a humble servant of God who is walking by faith and not by sight and Peter Peter's journey took him from being a full more fisherman to be a humble follower of Christ to become so proud and thinking that hey 
I am in the inner circle. I'm, the, I'm among the three that Jesus always called. And so he felt that, you know, he was there. He was the one who declared, you are the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him, Simon, Simon, Satan have desired to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you. You know, I just imagine the prayer that Jesus prayed for Peter that night. I have prayed that your faith do not fail. Jesus did not pray for Peter to not fall. Listen to me carefully now. Jesus didn't pray for Peter to not fall. Jesus prayed for Peter that when he falls and comes to his senses, he will not give up. He will not stay down. But he will get up and learn the lessons he need to learn and continue to grow in Jesus. And after that experience, Jesus gave Peter a special commission. At the seaside, as he after the resurrection, he said to him, Simon, you know, <laughs> guys, that's amazing. When Jesus was resurrected, it was Peter that Jesus had in mind. When he told the angels, he told the disciples, he said, listen, I'm going before you in Galilee. Tell the disciples and Peter. Because he knew the embarrassment that Peter faced. And so he was restoring Peter. He says, tell the disciples and Peter. Peter, you're not left out. <laughs> Tonight you might be struggling for years, but Jesus will not leave you out. He says, listen, he who has begun a good work in you, even when you feel like a failure, even when you have failed a thousand times, Jesus is waiting and he wants patiently to teach you that lesson of maturity and, and consistency and when Peter came to him he said Simon do you love me <laughs> Simon said yes Lord you know I love you and the Lord said to him feed my sheep you know what the Lord was saying to Peter he was saying Peter you have been through it Peter, you know what it means to almost let go. You know what it means. You, you, you saw that night when Peter was cursing the bad word and denying Jesus the third time. He turned around and he looked. He saw Jesus smiling at him. Peter couldn't handle it and he went out and wept. Jesus was saying, Peter, you know what it means to almost let go. You know what it means to, to be proud and confident and realize that, that that confidence did not help you. You know what it means to be a failure. But you also know what it means to overcome. That's why Jesus says, I have prayed. He says, when you are converted, when you become mature in your faith, strengthen the brethren. I am, I am commissioning you, Peter. Use the lessons from, from what you have learned. Use the experience that you have and encourage someone in the faith, Peter. Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. And keep them in the flock. And if you notice that both epistles, <laughs> both epistles of Peter are addressing young christians in first peter chapter 2 verses 1 to 3 peter says listen as new put away all anger and wrath and malice and all these things and as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you might grow and in second peter which we're going to focus on at this time if you have your bibles go with me to the second Peter chapter 1 and we read from verse 1 we're not going to read it entirely we're going to read snippets here and there 
but I'm going to try it with the time I have to make these important points to you. Peter in this epistle, brothers and sisters, is not addressing unbelievers. Peter says, <laughs> I'm reading from the, the, the Holman Christian Standard Bible version. It says, Simon Peter, not a fisherman, Simon Peter, not a bad word cursor, Simon Peter, not a failure, but a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. To those who have obtained, the King James Version says, like precious faith, but this version says, we have obtained a faith of equal privilege to ours. So what Peter is saying is that the faith that you have received is the same faith that I have as an apostle. <laughs> there is no apostle faith different from prophet faith, different from normal member faith, different from pastor faith. It is the same faith that made Peter a successful and a faithful apostle. It is the same faith by which you have come to Christ. Same faith. <laughs> and by that same faith, you can be an overcomer. And that's why when Jesus, when the apostles told, when Jesus told the apostles what they needed to do, and they said, Lord, increase our faith. The Lord said to them, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can do it. <laughs> you, can, you can tell mountains to be cast into the sea and it will obey you. And Peter greeted the brethren and said, His divine power, verse 3, has given unto us everything required <laughs> for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who hath called us by his own glorious glory and goodness and by these he has given us great and exceeding precious promises so that through them you may share in the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss so the first step my brothers and sisters the first step towards maturity is that you need to escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. In other words, you need to be converted. You need to be born again. Why? Because the nature that you were born with is corrupt. The nature that you were born with is corrupt. And you cannot, listen to this carefully, you cannot have spiritual growth without spiritual birth. You need to start. You need to be born again. And, and, and listen, this corrupt nature cannot be remedied. It cannot be modified. It cannot, it cannot be rescued. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 5 through to 8, the Bible says that the carnal mind, the fleshly mind, is at enmity with God. For it is not subject to the law of God, and neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh, the Bible says, cannot please God. In no matter how much you try. You could from morning till night seek to have a good will and have good intentions. That flesh, that carnal mind cannot please God. You must be born again, which means that you must surrender. That old man must die. You must take up your cross and follow Jesus. And I believe sometimes, my brothers and sisters, the reason we are having so much problem in the church, it is because there are people in the church who have not been born again. There are people in the church who have not fully surrendered themselves to Christ. And allow self to die. And so the corrupt nature is still being manifested. 
and and the apostle john in first john chapter 2 verse 5 15 to 17 tells us the characteristics of that corrupt nature he says all that is in the world he says love not the world neither the things that are in the world for if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye and the pride of life these things are not of the father but they are of the world and in the church sometimes we see it operating in the church we see the pride of life driving some people and their behavior their ambition for supremacy their, their ambition for attention their ambition to want to be noticed and to want to be in the preeminence pride of life the loss of the flesh is manifested without any form of repentance these things the bible says cannot please god and if if you try to fix your life without a full surrender to jesus you are simply a moralist you are not a christian you are simply an upright citizen whom men will applaud but in the eyes of heaven the bible says they have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof and so tonight we are calling for full surrender peter says the only way you can grow is if you have escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss and you can only escape that if you have surrendered your heart to Jesus completely and become dead to sin and alive to Christ. The Apostle Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. And then the Apostle Paul continues. Sorry, he says, having escaped the corruption, he says in verse 5, for this very reason, Make every effort to supplement or to add to your faith, or the King James Version said, being diligent, add to your faith goodness. Goodness, knowledge, to knowledge, temperance, and goodness is virtue, by the way, to temperance or self control, patience, to patience, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity, or love. So the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Peter, sorry, is saying to us, having escaped the corruption of the world through loss, having begun the journey, the experience with Christ, you need to grow. <laughs> you need to grow. You need to grow by working on the problem of addition. And Ellen White says, God works on the problem of multiplication. Let me try and break this down as simple as possible for you. This epistle, brothers and sisters, is about how you spend your life after baptism. It's about what your life should be between that Christian experience of baptism and conversion until glorification or until you lay yourself to rest in the grave and the resurrection. There's a name for that and it's called sanctification. Okay? Sanctification. And I want you to understand, my brother and sister, is that there are some myths about sanctification. One of the myths that we have about sanctification is that the longer you're in the church, the more you will grow. That is a myth. <laughs> Are we together? That is a myth. Let me tell you what, what happened. I, I said to one group, I said, sanctification is the work of a lifetime but a lifetime in the church does not guarantee sanctification. Let me repeat that. Sanctification 
is the work of a lifetime, but a lifetime in the church does not guarantee sanctification. You know, I did this series a couple of times, and one one church, one place I did this series, a, a, a member said to me, I said, I said, Pastor, I've been in the church for 40 years, and I have to confess, I am not mature, I'm not there. So a lifetime in the church does not guarantee this. Peter says the only way it's going to happen is if you add it to your faith. And tomorrow night, tomorrow night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, those three nights are critical. I'm going to be talking about the three areas in your life by which you grow and by which maturity is measured. So you can't miss any night. <laughs> if you're applying to miss any night, it must have been tonight. It's not just about being there in the church for a long time. It's about adding to your faith. Peter says, this is how you make your calling and election sure. This is how you grow. You must grow and increase. And the apostles state all the elements that you need to add. I'm not going to spend time on it tonight. I'm going to talk more about it tomorrow night. But tonight I'm emphasizing the need to grow. Because guess what, brothers and sisters? Guess what? If you have escaped the corruption of the world through loss, if you have escaped the corruption, which means that if you have been born again, you have been justified, but you are not growing, the Apostle Peter is saying you are in a backslidden state. And Peter knows that very well. Peter knows what it means to having, after starting to follow the Lord, he went into a boxing state and had stopped growing. It was because Peter had stopped growing why he denied the Lord. Because pride took over his heart and he felt that he was growing, but he was not. He was deceived. And that's why the Lord prayed for him and said, Peter, me know. <laughs> you're not listening to me right now, Peter. Your, your ear, pride, deaf your ears. And I'm telling you, brethren, I personally know what that is like. I remember my own experience of leaving university and coming out to be a pastor. And for the first year or so, I was not growing. And I remember when I faced embarrassment, I have to go to the Lord. I said, Lord, teach me like a baby. Teach me as if I'm a child. I'm going to... I'm going to start reading your word again. And this time I'm going to listen, Lord. <laughs> you see, pride, pride prevents us from listening to anybody else but ourselves. And Peter knows that. And so Peter is saying, Peter is saying, if you're a born-again Christian and you're not growing, you're in a backslidden position. Don't, don't take my word for it. Read it. Here's what Peter says in verse Verse 8, Peter says, If these qualities are yours and are increasing, they will keep you from being useless or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen to this very carefully now. Verse 9 and 10. Don't miss this. The person who lacks these things, <laughs> Peter is talking to Christians who lacks the virtues that he says you must add. The person who lacks these things is blind and short-sighted and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his past sins. Therefore, brothers, Peter says, make every effort to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fall. This is what Peter says. Make your calling an election sure. You must be growing. <laughs> you must be growing. Ellen White says in the book Acts of the Apostles, page 532 to 533, 
there are those who attempt to ascend the ladder of Christian progress. But as they advance, they begin to put their trust in the power of man. And soon lose sight of Jesus, the author and finisher of their faith. The result is failure. The loss of all that has been gained. Sad indeed is the condition of those who becoming weary of the way, allow the enemy of souls to rob them of the Christian graces that have been developing in their hearts and lives. Otherwise, he's saying it is possible to lose the progress that you have made if you neglect to keep your eyes on Jesus. And this is a dangerous position to be in as I wrap this up. This is a dangerous position to be in because Peter, in, in the second chapter, chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 2, Peter had to address a, a different class of Christians. <laughs> you know, what I call them Christians. Peter had to address those Christians who were not only self-deceived, but they were teaching others. Listen to me carefully now. They were teaching others to live like the world while they claim to be Christians. Don't take my word for it. Don't take my word for it. Go to chapter 2. Go to chapter 2. And that's why Peter had to, had to ensure that he, that he told the brethren, Peter says, listen brethren, you know, what? even from the days of the apostles, you had people in the church who give problems. Because Peter, as an apostle appointed by Jesus, had to be proving his positional apostle. And so Peter, in, in, before he was going to address the false teachers, he had to remind the brethren <laughs> who gave him authority. Peter said, listen, brethren, know this. What I'm telling you, I, I didn't make it up. I, I am not following cunningly devised fables when I made known to, unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter said, I was there. <laughs> I was there with him in the mountain. I was there with him, walking with him and listening to his word. And even so, we have a more sure word of prophecy. That what I'm telling you is the right thing. Because there were some Nicolaitans. Jesus addressed these same folks in, in, in his letter to the seven churches. These are folks who, while they live riotously, while they live like the world in fornication and adultery and all manner of evil, they are still claiming that they are Christians. And that's why Peter had to address them in, in 2 Peter chapter 2. And we're going to read from verse... Um, let me read from verse 14. Peter says, They have eyes full of adultery and are always looking for sin they seduce unstoppable unstable people and have hearts trained in greed children under curse they have gone astray by abandoning the straight way like like balaam and balaam would have been a great example of this and if you notice the apostle sorry jesus as i said addressed these same people when he addressed the church in thyatira or pergamum i think it's i think it's pergamum he accused the church in pergamum of accommodating those who, who, who teach a doctrine of Balaam, who teach my people to commit fornication and to offer sacrifice to idols. Same people Peter is addressing here. These are springs of water without water in verse 17. Mists driven by a whirlwind. The gloom of darkness has been reserved for them. For by un for uttering boastful empty words, they seduce with fleshly desires and debauchery People who have barely escaped from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, but they themselves are the servants of corruption. Since people are enslaved to whatever defeats them, it says, verse 24, if, if having escaped the, the imp world's impurity through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in these things and defeated, the last state is worse than the first. 
Peter said that it had been better that you have not known the way of righteousness and after you have come to know it you forsake it it's like dog returning to his vomit that's what Peter says so there's a so there's a danger brothers and sisters if after making attempt to grow and you find yourself being defeated there's a danger of getting into a relapsed position and saying God must accept me just as I am <laughs> You know, anyway, and anyway, it says that some people in the last days, some in ladies and church will say, God have to take me just as I am. I remember one brother told me that if God wanted to change me, he could change me. <laughs> you know, so he was making God responsible for his backsidden's position. But tonight, my brother and sisters, the Apostle Peter has given us a formula. The only formula to make our calling and election sure is to grow in grace. 